Let's now talk about cultural approach to uh, critical discourse analysis, which is a variant of a very recent variant of critical discourse analysis. In the beginning, I'll just introduce what this approach is and how is it different from mainstream critical discourse analysis. As I said earlier, it's just a variant of uh, critical discourse analysis and it's very much a kind of CDA in which we look into uh, the making, a uh, linguistic making of certain cultural codes which form certain meaning in, in a society. So these uh, cultural codes are very important to form uh, not only relations in a, in a society but also how a uh, certain discourse generates multiple meanings in various situations in a society. So specifically speaking, it focuses on which cultural codes are embedded in discourse and how do they contribute uh, to the reprodu reproduction of abuses uh, through their discourse or abuses of power through this uh, discourse. To put it in simple terms, it looks into various cultural elements, uh, let's say for example gender roles, how gender roles are assumed in, in a certain culture, attitudes, values of people, uh, in relation to various social uh, social or cultural phenomena and how these all codes or cultural elements actually uh, generate certain uh, meanings uh, from the discourse which is being produced in a society and does that production carry some important uh, abuse of power or authority or does it builds or dismantle the power relations between various uh, actors in the society. To put it in more specific terms, let's say a, uh, a discourse generated about gender roles in Pakistani society or in any, any Muslim society uh, may have a different meaning in Western context. So we need to see that what kind of culture codes are embedded in a text and where those codes are relevant. So in a, in, in a certain situation, uh, they may be acceptable in certain contexts, whereas in other situations, in other cu cultures, they may not be acceptable. Or uh, even in the same culture, uh, this discourse may not be acceptable uh, in, in other situations, in different situations. Let's say, without getting uh, much into detail, I would like to say, if we just talk about the typical male discourse, if if the things, many things would be acceptable in a typical male discourse uh, but if that, that discourse is spread uh, in general in the society where, where, the, uh, where other people are also invo involved uh, many things talked in, in that discourse may be questionable same may be uh, the case uh, with many other discourses uh, Fairclough also believes uh, about about the importance of cultural items in making meanings in the same way and his thoughts that uh, critical discourse analysis uh, helps us to understand how discourse sustains social and critical inequalities abuses of power and, and domination patterns how uh, various cultural codes help people build their domination in in a certain society and how that is reflected through their discourses. For example, in, in a typical Eastern societies, there are many quotations which are repeated frequently by many people who uh, give a certain gender an edge over the other. Uh, therefore, uh, we can assume how a certain view about a gender is enacted, enacted and maintained in the society. If you just allow me, I will give you an example. Uh, uh, th there is a very famous quote uh, in, a, in our culture, Mard ban Mard. What does this carry? I mean, this, this shows a kind of inbuilt superiority of uh, male gender. And it, it, it says that you need to be somehow better than what you are. And that would make you a male. So male is implicitly is being conveyed as a better gender than, than the other ones. So 
There are so many other examples which can be cited here. But this is how certain cultural codes actually reinforce uh, certain meanings which, which may involve uh, some kind of manipulation or abuse of power relations. Uh, Von Dijk had the similar views and, uh, and beliefs that in order to explain uh, various kinds of meanings, we need to relate them to socio-cognitive uh, representations as attitudes, norms, values, and ideologies. And somehow they, 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 they are the cultural codes also. So in order to understand uh, and unearth uh, the inequalities, discriminations in a society which are enacted through discourse, we need to see them through some kind of culture codes also. Uh, there is another study which, which teaches us that discourse is saturated with culture and culture uh, contestations. Uh, therefore, as, as a vigilant citizen and, and, uh, and a part of uh, a society, as a good citizen, we need to uh, refrain from all kinds of discourses which can uh, employ such cultural codes uh, which ultimately would, would lead to some kind of discrimination or abuse of power. We, we, we also need to talk uh, and see cultural discourse analysis as a kind of interdisciplinary approach. It is still a de developing field. It, it's not complete or it cannot be complete in any way. Uh, but it's, it's still developing and at the moment uh, the kind of work is, which is being done in CCDA is, ba is based on interdisciplinary and disciplinary approach. It involves various aspects of other uh, uh, fields of study also. For example, it involves cultural uh, memory, cultural narratives and cultural narratology to analyze such narratives, uh, cultural representations and cultural discourse analysis. It also involves Fairclough's uh, concept of cultural turn as well as uh, cultural script uh, also. So uh, overall, in, in short, CCDA, which is Cultural Critical Discourse Analysis, involves analyzing and bringing forward uh, those cultural codes which are employed by, uh, by some people in position in a certain society to sustain their power or ideology in a way which may manipulate or exploit others.